oh it's six o'clock still i don't see any uh attenders so i'll just start with the session hope i am you can watch the session during the in, on youtube uh, as well so i'll just start with the session so welcome to the third live interactive session for nptl course nanobiotechnology and the build point of care devices the course code for this course is noc 24 ge 23 uh the course instructor for this course is professor uh, gorchand datta school of medical sciences and technology indian institute of technology kharagpur uh my name is amit kale i am the prime minister research fellow in the department of mechanical engineering iit tirupati i'll be the mentor for this course so as we've been doing uh every week uh, we just go go ahead with some we will move forward with uh, the basic formalities which we have uh, with every session basically it's a live interactive session for to boost your performance it is not compulsory but highly encouraged be respectful so you have to be respectful in chat um, in case you have any questions you can put in you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the question or else if you are watching on youtube uh you can just put it in the comment section uh the questions for uh, you can ask them at the end of the session the video for this session will be uploaded on the youtube so you can access the video via the direct uh, link or uh, through uh, this youtube channel link uh the ppts of the course as well uh, will be uploaded in the common uh, drive folder that has been shared in the public uh, google sheet you can access the ppt as well uh, from the uh, from the drive link so today's uh, session plans basically we, we would be discussing the practice assignment 3 and then we'll be moving to the uh, question and answers in case you are uh, watching this session on youtube you can just uh, watch uh, you can just put your questions in the comment section of the youtube so moving with the course outline so basically it's a eight week course and right now we are in the third week of the course uh this uh, this week the uh, basic the uh, as per the syllabus the topics included are basic tools used in diagnostic signal amplification chemistry for higher signal to background ratio uh, redox cycling amplification methods uh, elect uh, electrode surface modification with nano nanomaterials so uh, um all these things have been covered this week uh so uh, we'll directly start with the week 3 practice assignment so so this is the first question basically in uh, cyclic uh, voltammogram so basically that is uh, widely used as a signal detection technique so in cyclic voltammogram the legends of x axis and y axis respectively are so the first option is uh, current and potential so basically it means that current is on the x axis and potential is on the y axis uh, b uh, potential current so potential on the x axis current on the y axis uh, c charge and potential so charge on the x axis potential on the y axis or d potential on the x axis and charge on the uh, y axis so any guesses
yes the answer is on option b uh, the potential is on the uh, x axis and current is on the y axis so basically this is a cyclic voltammogram so you can see that uh, the voltage is being increased and the current is being measured uh, likewise so basically what happens is uh, in the first stage there is some capacitance that is created due to at the boundary between the um, electrode and uh, the uh, and the uh, solution so basically what will happen is uh at in the air gap or uh, in within the uh, solution gap between the um, electrolyte and the electrode there will be some air gaps or air bubbles basically so that will lead to capacitance being caused so that is the basically the capacitive current so basically the, uh, this will, that will store the charge so that you will not see any current in the initial phases then there is faraday current so basically the bubble will burst above after a certain time so there will be a sudden increase in the current that you will experience so you can see the sudden jump in the current and then the things will normalize and then you will uh, get a slow relaxation so I'll, uh, similarly when uh, uh, then it returns back uh, to the mm, initial uh, voltage because uh, so that is how the cyclic voltammogram actually looks so uh, the answer is B uh, potential uh, applied potential on the x-axis and the y is uh, the current so the moving to the next question so if you want to do chronoembryometry considering the oxidation of the redox factor species uh, the potential you must apply for the study must be less than EPA uh, uh, greater than EPC uh, greater than EPA equal to or greater than EPA so basically EPA and EPC basically uh, means the potential at anode and potential at cathode so uh, that you might be confused with it so basically you have to tell me that uh, you in corona imperiometry basically you are applying a square wave potential at the electrode and then measuring current with respect to time so that is the basic fundamental of corona imperiometry so what should be the potential that you must apply to get actual uh, redox uh, yeah so what should be the minimum potential you should apply uh, for the study so whether it should be less than the epa greater than epc should it be greater than epa or should it be equal to or greater than Yes, uh, the current value should be equal to or greater than EPA. Basically, as I said earlier, uh, the when you apply the current, first sum of the current is charge is basically 
uh, taken up by the capacitance that has been created at the boundary. So basically due to air bubble or due to air gap or anything, uh, a capacitance will be created at the boundary. So all the charge will be uh, absorbed at that capacitance and subsequently when, uh, once uh, the capacitance is broken, once the potential is high enough that the capacitance is broken, um, the current will start flowing. So the minimum current you should you need so as to get some meaningful result should, will always be more than the value of EPA. So that is how uh, we find uh, the basic logic behind this answer. So uh, to get uh, meaningful results in chronoamperiometry, the value of the voltage applied should be enough to um, overcome all the barriers or the all the uh, barriers that are being posed for the current to flow. So that is why the value or uh, so the answer is uh, equal to or greater than EPA. So yeah. So now let's move to the third question. So third question is basically ascorbic acid is an interfering agent in certain analyte detection. This can be eliminated by addition of which of the following enzymes. So whether it is glucose or oxidase, ascorbic acid oxidase, xanthine gen gen oxidase, uh, polyphenol oxidase. So basically enzymes are basically used for uh, speeding up a reaction. So here we, what we want to find, uh, what we want is uh, ascorbic acid is a uh, interfering agent. So we have to uh, convert ascorbic acid oh. into something so that uh, the becomes uh, that interference has is eliminated so what enzyme can, will be used in this case is what we need to find out so any guesses See, it's a simple hint in this is basically all the enzymes, if you go for glucose, uh, or, uh, the enzymes are named before, uh, named upon the material which uh, it uh, reacts with. So basically when uh, glucose oxidase is meant to react with glucose. So similarly, this uh, for ascorbic acid the enzyme name is ascorbic acid oxidase which is this so ascorbic acid oxidase uh, uh, leads to the reaction between uh, so uh, it tries to convert uh, ascorbic acid into two uh, dehyd dehydro ascorbic acid which does not interfere with the redox cycling so that is why we use ascorbic acid oxidase in the uh, reaction so moving to the next uh, so any doubts with this So moving to the next question, so use of hexamine uh, ruthenium uh, as a redox cycling mediator is basically for what it increases the interfering species effect, it reduces the interfering species effect, reduces the electrocatalytic effect, increases the electrocatalytic effect. So basically why are we using uh, hexa, hexamine, hexamine ruthenium 
in as a redox cycling mediator is what is asked in the question so why uh, should we use it any guesses Basically, what happens is in a redox reaction, you need to apply some certain potential for actually for the redox cycling to occur. So, what happens is uh, in case of a typical uh, mediator such as ferrocyanin, you need to apply more potential. So, more potential, what happens is when you apply more potential, you are basically giving more energy. So, when you give more energy, even the side reactions get uh, initiated faster. So, so these side reactions will obviously lead to interference in the signal. So, this is the basic fundamental of what, why hexa amine ruthium is being used in this, in the entire uh, redox cycling mechanism uh, uh, per se. So the answer for this is basically to reduce the interfering species effects. Basically, what will happen is uh, it will hexaamine uh, ruthium uh, will uh, work at potential lower than ferrocyanin or some other uh, redox cycling mediators so that will bring down the potential that is required and that we should apply and that will in a way lead to uh, reduction in the interfering species effect so that is how the mechanism is work and that is what the logic is so is this uh, explanation sufficient or do I need to explain something more? Okay, I'll take it as a yes and I will move to the next question. Basically, yeah. So here we have two electrodes. One is a bare electrode, one is a nanomaterial modified electrode. So we want to know, find out what is the effect of impedance in the following schematic. So whether the Im impedance in uh, second electrode is more than the first electrode, whether the impedance will be the same, whether the impedance in first electrode is second is greater than the second electrode, or there is no effect. So basically, it is saying that whether if there uh, will there be no effect of uh, nanomaterial modified electrode of nanomaterial coating on the impedance of the electrode so basically what is the function uh, so to look at this answer basically we need to fi find out what is the actual function of this electrode so the main function of electrode is basically to transfer the electrons so somehow from the basic redox reactions some electron will be generated that electron will uh, be transferred at the electrode and that electron will be detected uh, and you will get the readings so for the entire readout to happen you need electron transfer to take place so now what uh, here it and the second uh, and the second term uh, important here is impedance so what is impedance so impedance as the from the word only you can see impedance is how you can impede so higher the impedance basically there will be um, more obstruction to the flow of electrons so if the impedance is higher there will be uh, the electron transfer will be slower if the impedance will be lower the uh, uh, electron transfer will be faster so from this explanation which i gave what where do you think impedance will be higher where we have a, a nanomaterial which will facilitate electron transfer 
or a bare electrode so in which case will the impedance be higher so yeah so the answer is answer is c um add the so there will be the since uh, the nano materials basically will uh, allow for a faster uh, electron transfer so the impedance will be lower at uh, the modified electrode whereas at the bare electrode uh, the electron transfer will take place at its normal pace so the impedance is higher in the bare electrode So then, uh, moving to the question six, uh, which of the following is the correct representation of or the, of the equivalent circuit diagram of electroscopic impedance spectroscopy? So EIS. So, what do you think will be the uh, appropriate uh, equivalent circuit diagram? So EIS. This is a bit complicated and people with bio background it will be a bit difficult to know but it has been given um, specifically in the lecture slides as well as uh, sir has discussed it in the lecture but okay I'll just uh, give you each and every uh, parameter in detail. So what happens is basically um, at the electrode surface basically we will have uh, some kind of air gap or the what or some solvent will be there which will also have some air gaps so because of the air gaps there will be a double layer which will be forming and that double layer will cause ca uh, capacitance so basically a double layer will act as like a bubble so it will uh, keep on storing the charge but not allow the charge transfer to happen to the electrode so that what is happening at the electrode is called as the double layer capacitance so then there is basically uh, uh, other things that is um, one is um, the resistance that is offered by the electrode that is the another uh, the problem and then there is a diffusion limitation so basically uh, the because it is happening inside a electrolyte there is some amount or uh, there is a uh, diffusion happening between the electrolyte and the uh, electrode so basically that will happen in this like uh, the, these two uh, uh, resistances uh, and limitations will always come into uh, play so the equivalent circuit diagram will look like this so the it will be like an uncompensated uh, resistance will be connected with the phenomena that is happening on the surface so all this uh, all these uh, factors like ctl rct and zw are actually happening on the surface so division uh, double layer capacitance, uh, charge transfer resistance and diffusion limitation will all happen on the surface of the, uh, uh, sorry, on the interface, interface between the electrolyte and the electrode. So the, the, this is how the entire setup will look like. So the answer is, answer is B. So you will have a capacitor uh, in parallel with a resistor and the diffusion limitation uh, re uh, reactants and then they will be uh, entire thing is uh, set up will be kind of connected in series with the uh, uncompensated resistor. Do you have any questions? I'll take it as a 
now we'll move to the next question so this is a basic simple question you need to use your brain so this is just like you have multi multiplex uh, biosensor with 10 an analytes then at least how many working electrodes and counter electrodes and reference electrodes are needed to reference, uh, respectively so whether you need one each so uh, this is uh, or whether you need uh, 10 10 10 of each whether you need one uh, working electrode one uh, 10 counter electrode and one uh, reference electrode or you need 10 working electrode one uh, uh, counter electrode and one reference electrode so basically the entire detection is happening at the working electrode so you want to detect 10 analytes so but, but at the same time there will be nothing happening at the reference and counter electrode there. So, the, so the reference electrode you can see from the word itself is that it will act as a reference and the counter electrode itself also there will be no reaction happening at the counter electrode so just from the basic logic what do you think will be the right answer so yeah the answer is 10 1 1 so basically all you need is 10 uh, working electrodes where, uh, where the detection will actually happen and then you will have the current relative to the uh, counter electrode and the working electrode and the reference electrode will basically act as a reference so that is how it will happen so even one counter and one reference electrode is sufficient all you need is a separate working electrode for every uh, measurement you want to do because at the working electrode is where the reactions occur and uh, the working electrode will be consumed after every uh, reaction so this is a very important point you need to know any doubts any questions so i think so it's clear we'll move to the next question so this is again a very simple question uh, commonly available pregnancy test kit is an example of what type of biosensor screen printed electrode indium tin oxide electrode a paper based electrode a laser induced electrode so basically pre uh, pregnancy test kit uh, has a nitrocellulose uh, type of uh, membrane on which the entire uh, um, test kit is based on so what do you think will be the answer so yeah it's a very simple answer fairly simple answer that is a uh, paper based electrode so going to the next question so commonly available pregnancy test kit is an example of which of the following essays uh, whether it's a, a, a EIS electrochemical impedance spectroscopy uh, surface plasma resonance lateral flow things. so basically we have discussed this uh, yeah the way we have discussed this in many assignments I guess this is the third time this question is coming so yeah it's a lateral flow essay so basically the flow is happening due to capillary action so in that case the essay is called as the lateral flow essay so now yeah uh, the, coming to the next last question test line has sandwich lateral flow essay based by sensor changes color on the upon the addition of analyte of interest so why why is it happening so either it is happening because of attachment of uh, binded primary antibody with the secondary antibody attached uh, to the te test line or due to the attachment of target binded secondary antibody with the primary antibody attached to the test line So, or uh, due to attachment of primary antibody with the secondary antibody, 
attached to the test line or due to attachment of secondary antibody with primary at antibody attached to the test line. So basically it's uh, you are uh, finding out so in the first two options there is like a uh, target binded uh, primary antibody and pri uh, target binded secondary antibody is there uh, so just break down because all the options look similar so just in the first two options uh, we have target binding in the last two options there is no target binding so What do you think will be the answer? So I explained in the previous session is that the main detection happens uh, because of like the primary antibody will always be attached on the surface. So what we are having is we are having a test line which is controlled uh, which is being coated with uh, the prime so this is a, a, a schematic of a uh, lateral flow assay so basically here we have a test line which is coated with the primary antibody right so the sample is being dropped on the sample pad what will happen is due to capillary flow it will just start moving towards the um, like uh, uh, towards the other side so as the sample is moving the secondary antibody will attach to the analytes that are of our interest and then once it reaches the test line the secondary antibody or, uh, which has uh, been labeled with a gold nanoparticle or something will uh, attach with the analyte will attach to the test line so basically test line will look like a primary antibody the detection analyte secondary antibody which is uh, which has the gold nanoparticle as a labeling element uh, attached to it in case of failure, so in case of failure, in case there is no analyte is being found, so what will happen is in case the blood has no analyte, it will cross through the test line and it will, uh, so what will happen is the secondary antibodies will uh, link, uh, will attach directly to the uh, antibodies at the control line. So uh, in the first case, if it is successful, the secondary antibody, so the structure will look like um, gold nanoparticle, secondary antibody, and then like primary antibody. In case of failure, at the control line, the structure will look like gold nanoparticles, uh, secondary antibody, and the control antibody. So this is how the structure will look like, and that is how the color actually comes in the structure so the answer is basically due to attachment of target binded secondary antibody with the primary antibody attached to the test line so i, I hope i was clear with this um, uh, explanation if you need uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask For the uh, uh, help of people who joined in now, I'll just uh, skim through the questions once again. Uh, just, just a moment. I'll just, uh, I'll just skim through the questions once again. the first question is in a cyclic ultrabogram what is there in the x-axis and the y-axis respectively so whether it's current on the x-axis and potential on the y-axis whether the potential on the x-axis current on the 
y-axis charge on the x-axis uh, potential on the y-axis potential on the x-axis charge on the y-axis so the answer is b potential uh, is on the x-axis you apply the potential and then you measure the current is what happens in the cyclic world homogram then uh, the second question is in corona imperiometry consider you are doing a redox active species uh, oxidation of redox active species the potential you apply must be so whether it should be less than epa uh, whether it should be greater than epc uh, whether it should be greater than epa or equal to or greater than epa so basically epa and pc send for the electric potential at the anode and uh, cathode so the answer is uh, it should be uh, equal than or greater than epa value so coming to the third question so this is this, uh, this is basically srp acid is basically interfering interfering enzyme in amyloid detection so how do we eliminate uh, ascorbic acid so for eliminating it we convert ascorbic acid into dihydro uh, acid uh, ascorbic acid so uh, for that we need an enzyme so basically enzyme finding out the enzyme is basically very easy so uh, glucose oxidase is used for glucose ascorbic acid oxidase is used for ascorbic acid so uh, likewise you, uh, you can just like this is basic um, um, you don't even have to think in, into it so if there's an enzyme for a specific material it is uh, highly possible that the enzyme's name will be uh, same as what the target uh, chemical is so yeah so next question is so basically use of hexa i mean ruthium uh, in the redox cycling mediator increases the interfering species effect reduces the interfering species effect reduces the electrocatalytic effect or increases the electrocatalytic effect so basically what is happening is if you use ferrocyanin you need higher potential to be applied this actually leads to degradation of uh, other uh, um, elements that are present in the redox uh, in the cycle and uh, leads to interference in the uh, actual uh, readings what we want so to reduce the potential that is needed for the redox cycling uh, uh, reaction to occur what we do is we use hexa i mean ruthium instead of ferrocyanin so what it does is basically it reduces the interfering species effect uh, so this is the fifth question so basically here we need to find out uh, which electrode ha has higher impedance so whether the first electrode has higher impedance or the second electrode has higher impedance so in the first electrode it's a bare electrode in the second electrode it is nanomaterial modified electrode uh, so basically the nanomaterial will uh, help in electron transfer to occur so and since impedance from the world itself you can find out that impedance is basically the uh, imp how so higher the impedance basically the electron flow will be slower so we need the electron transfer to be faster so basically since nanomaterial is faster the electron transfer so the answer is c uh, impedance in a bare electrode will be higher than impedance in a uh, normal electrode. So, uh, moving to question 6. Um, so, basically, we need to find out the equivalent diagram of VIS. So, uh, this is uh, there in the lecture slides, and even if you don't know, just to give you a, like, a basic understanding of this. So, basically, the the you can see that uh, the electrodes uh, will have a like some electrodes and uh, will be dipped inside the electrolyte so basically there will be a um, layer uh, th there will be an interface between the electrode and the electrolyte uh, so that uh, layer uh, that interface will be of air 
so basically what will happen is air will actually stop the char charge transfer from happening and it will uh, like store the charge so that will uh, lead to capacitance that may ha happening and at the same time there is mm, yeah. Uh, RCT, so uh, charge transfer resistance and diffusion limitation reaction, all these are uh, happening at the surface and uh, uh, R, um, uh, theta is the compensatory reaction, uh, resistance, that is the resistance uh, that uh, of the electrode, so this is what, uh, how the uh, representation of uh, equivalent circuit diagram looks like so now uh, this is th these th uh, this is a very simple question basically you have 10 multiplex power sensors for 10 10 analyte detection then at least how many working counter and reference electrode are needed respectively so whether it's 111 you need 10 uh, all uh, like 10 working electrodes, 10 counter electrodes or 10 uh, reference electrodes or you need just one uh, working electrode, 10 counter electrodes and one reference electrode or you need 10 working electrodes, uh, one uh, com uh, counter electrode and one reference electrode. So basically working electrode is where all the reactions are happening. And reference and counter electrode, there is no reaction happening. They are also only used as a reference or as a counter in electrochemical detection. So from that we can easily, um, logically we can come to this conclusion that uh, the we need 10 working electrode, one reference and one uh, counter electrode is fine, fine for, for us. So yeah, coming to the question eight commonly available pregnancy test kit is an example of which type of biosensor whether it's a screen printed electrode indium tin oxide electrodes paper based electrode or a laser induced electrode so the answer is it's a paper based electrode so basically it have uh, the pregnancy test kit are made on uh, nitrocellulose membrane so the electrode is a paper based electrode so again the same thing uh, what is the commonly available pregnancy test kit example of so whether it's a electrochemical impedance spectroscopy surface plasma resonance lateral phase or optics so it's a la lateral phase it's a na nitrocellulose membrane the sample is put in one uh, sampling zone and then through capillary action it moves across so it's a example of lateral phase so the question then test line and uh, sandwich LFA based biosensor changes color upon the addition of analyte of interest due to attachment of target finded uh, primary antibody with the secondary antibody attached to a test line due to attachment of target minded uh, secondary antibody with primary antibody attached to the test line or due to attachment of primary antibody with secondary antibody attached to the test line or secondary antibody uh, attachment of secondary antibody with primary antibody attached to the test line so basic understanding is at the test line there will be primary antibody primary antibody is basically responsible for detection so that is highly specific uh, antibody so uh, that is why it is called as the primary antibody so basically what happens is you drop the sample in the sample pack then you the sample moves through capillary reaction so the uh, secondary antibody will attach to the analyte of your uh, interest and then uh, once it reaches the test line so primary antibody will easily attach to the analyte of interest along with the uh, analyte there will be a secondary antibody attached with gold nanoparticles on top so that will lead to a color change on your antibody so basically if the test is positive the color change will happen at the test line if the test is negative what will happen is there will be no analyte at the control line the control antibody will attach with the secondary antibody 
and then there will be color change happening happening at the um, control thing so that is how it is so the answer is basically due to attachment of target minded uh, secondary antibody so basically target minded is uh, the analyte of interest antibody and uh, with now uh, primary antibody attached to the test uh, attached to the test line so any questions Uh, so you are asking about the fifth question so basically in uh, most of the cases it's the gold nanoparticles which are used because they are uh, stable uh, in uh, most of but uh, nowadays even polymeric nanoparticles are also being employed but uh, majorly it is gold nanoparticles uh, because they are easy to make they are stable and uh, they have a longer shelf life compared to the other um, nanoparticles so basically the, what you can say is uh, gold nanoparticles are the most widely used nanoparticles so any other question For paper based sensor, basically, say, uh, whatever, uh, whichever material can get you. So, you need three main factors. Basically, one is the capillary effect. If you don't have the capillary effect, uh, paper based sensor is useless because then you will have to uh, use some micro pumps or something which will actually uh, you will need external energy from the other end. So, all you need is a um, like you, what you can say is a capillary effect. Uh, factor number two, it should be uh, bio uh, stable. So basically, it should not happen. So there should not be a reaction between uh, the primary antibody which will be coating on the test line with the cellulose in the paper. So uh, with the uh, substrate. So basically, if the substrate is uh, having something and it is reacting with the with your antibody that is not what you want right you want the substrate to be stable and the third factor is basically it should not it should be holding so it should not like it should without too much of pre-treatment so basically in any of the paper based sensor you will need to do some pre-treatment so uh, without any pre-treatment uh, with very few pre-treatment it should be able to hold your biological element and it should not just like on the it should not scatter here and there it should be at the test line itself so with all these factors only nitrocellulose membranes are the only ones which are what you say look most promising so there might be other uh, things but if you are looking specifically at paper based sensor only nitrocellulose membranes can be used so that is basically nitrocellulose membrane is a filter paper any other question or uh, hope I answered your question 
If you have any other question, you can put them. case you don't have any question you are free to uh, exit from the session i'll just keep the session open for uh, the late comers okay is it uh, possible to uh, calculate the sensitivity of lateral sensitivity of lateral flow ic based devices So uh, basically, you know, I'll just put it this way. So lateral flow AC devices are basically, it will have limit of detection, but it will not have sensitivity. So what is limit of detection is basically, um, in case of the sample, this much, uh, even with this minimum quantity of the analyte, it will be detected. So that is what is called limit of detection. So basically that you, it will have. Sensitivity is basically the change in how change in uh, change in input versus the change in output. So basically if the sensitivity is uh, more, um, how will I put it? Um, like how sensitive it is to sensitivity is basically a relative term so basically it is it depends on the change not a, um like not a uh, yes or no um kind of uh, thing so what you are asking i i think is about the limit of detection sensitivity is basically how sensitive it is how it changes uh, with respect to and how the output changes with respect to a change in input how sensitive it is that is how the sensitivity is considered but in lateral flow i say majorly the test will be yes or no kind of test so it will be qualitative it will not be quantitative so in that case uh, i don't think sensitivity will come into play uh, limit of detection yes you can calculate but you need to do uh, practical studies and calculate it so i think you need to go through your basics again so what is the limit of detection what is sensitivity you need to uh, refresh again and you will uh, understand what i said today i hope this answers your question if you have any other question you can uh, free to put them
to this one, right? Uh, so are you asking about this question? Uh, explain about EIS again. So are you asking about this question? Or the other, or some other one? Yeah, okay, so, so basically, so yes, uh, this, is, uh, this is not given too much in detail, but I'll, uh, I'll try to help you. So basically, yes, basically is happening in a um, electrolyte. Mm, so all the three electrodes are dipped in an electrolyte. So now what is happening is you are applying so reference electrode uh, just ignore reference electrode for now so you just consider it as a two electrode si uh, system just for uh, the basic what I am telling you it is not the case but I am just telling you just understand uh, you are having a two electrode system right you are having a two electrode system wherein you are having the working electrode and the counter electrode reference electrode you just uh, for now don't think about it so here what will happen is basically you are applying charge between uh, the voltage you are applying so what will happen is when the voltage is being applied so electrons will flow from the counter electrode towards the working electrode so um, you understood that so now when the electrons are flowing so they will have some ob obstruction so it first obstruction will be in form of double layer capacitor so basically what will happen is there will be an interface between the electrode and the electrolyte so there is an interface between the electrode and the electrolyte so there there will be air bubbles so so that uh, is uh, cap uh, is quantified in terms of uh, capacitance, the double layer capacitance. So what will happen is these air bubbles will keep on storing the charge, and it will not let the charge pass through the electrode. So now, at a certain uh, uh, when the charge accumulation is too high, this bubble will burst, and then it will. Uh, become uh, short then it will be continuous flow so that, so that is why the capacitance is kept in parallel it is not kept in series so that is why the uh, it is kept in parallel once the bubble is burst the line will be short so then only these two resistance will come into play which is the faradaic impedance so basically that is the Im uh, impedance that will be occurring uh, between the uh, for charge transfer between the electrolyte and the electrode so basically it will not be like electrolyte and electrode will go directly smoothly so imagine you are uh, 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 electron is traveling so electron will face some resistance that will be there so that resistance is called as the transfer resistance so the uh, when the uh, electron is getting to move smoothly between the electrolyte and the electrode there will be some resistance that will be offered to the electron by the electrode so that is called as the charge transfer resistance and then the second is the diffusion um, limitation so basically there will be a certain capacity the electrode will have certain capacity only so uh, of what it can allow for a diffusion to happen so basically the there will be diffusion happening between the electrolyte and the electrode so there will be like yeah it's basically we have to go very deep into electrochemistry but just to uh, giving an example because there will be diffusion will be happening there will be uh, less, um, there will be some uh, opposition to the electron. So the atom will diffuse on the surface and that will not allow the electron to enter. So just uh, assume one thing like the 
uh, atom from this electrolyte is going and diffusing on the electrolyte electrode surface electrolyte is diffusing on the electrode surface and it is closing a gate for the electron to, uh, to enter so that is called as the diffusion limitation and then there will be again as i told you the resistance to um like resistance for electron to actually go inside so these are the two resistances all these resistances uh, like the capacitance resistance and the diffusion limitation happen at the interface and that happen at the interface between the um electrolyte and the electrode and then there will be like electrode resistance so obviously electrode is not going to be like there is no like superconductor material per se so what you will get is the uncompensated resistance from the electrode so that is how the circuit looks like so i hope i was clear in explaining you uh, if you need more in detail i can tell you that as well I hope I was clear with the explanation. If you need some more, if you have more doubts, you can answer. Uh, anyone else? If you have any questions, you are free to ask. So the lecture slides and the video will be record will be uploaded on the Google Drive uh, and the YouTube channel. So it will take uh, so day um, by tomorrow e evening I'll be doing it. So you will get everything by tomorrow evening. Uh, so this is uh, just for the like convenience of people who have joined. These are the questions we solved today. So, in the first question, we had we like, uh, what are the legends in the x and y axis of a cyclic voltammogram? So, basically, cyclic voltammogram is basically used for uh, sensor sensor detection. Uh, so, detect. So, here we apply the voltage, and then you uh, detect the current. So, basically. A power potential is on the x-axis and the current is on the y-axis. So the second question is basically if you want to do corona amperometry, uh, consider uh, considering the oxidation of a redox actor species, the potential you must apply must be. So basically EPA and EPC here stand for uh, the uh, electron uh, potential at the anode and uh, cathode so um, the value of uh, 
for corona parametry basically in corona parametry you put uh, the square waves and then you measure the current with respect to time so that the value will be equal to or greater than epa so the voltage applied should uh, should be equal to or greater than the anode anodic voltage then only you will get uh, results in corona parametry in the next question so basically uh, ascorbic acid is in a certain analyte detection ascorbic acid is acting as an interfering agent so we are uh, eliminating it by converting it into uh, 2d hydro ascorbic acid so what will be the enzyme that will be used for this reaction so basically enzyme related questions are the simplest basically if you want to in, uh, identify any enzyme so basically if you want um, for the glucose the enzyme is glucose oxidase for ascorbic acid the enzyme is ascorbic acid oxidase so these are very simple questions you will be easily able to attempt them in the exam also just basic logic so yeah so in basically uh, why are we using as uh, the question is basically use of exa i mean ruthenium as a redox cycling mediator so why are we using it so to increase the interfering species effect to reduce the interfering species effect to reduce the electrolytic effect or to increase the electrolytic effect so basically what is happening is if when you are using ferrocyanin you need to apply more potential higher potential you need to apply for the re oxidation redox reaction to occur so what we do is we are using hexam in ruthenium so that uh, so, so when you apply higher potential there will be more interference happening in uh, uh, at the like in the uh, redox cycling reaction so to reduce uh, that interference we are uh, using hexam in ruthenium as the uh, mediator so the purpose is to reduce the interfering uh, species effect so in this we have uh, in the first question we have two electrodes basically bare electrode and the nano material modified electrode so we need to find out which one has the higher impedance so in uh, the nano material modification we are doing so as to uh, faster the uh, electron transfer so obviously where the electron transfer is faster the impedance is lower so the impedance on bare electrode is will be higher than the impedance at the nanomaterial modified electrode so this question i explained it again so what will be the equivalent circuit diagram for eis so answer is b so this is a logical based question so if you have a multiplex bar sensor for 10 analyte detection how many working electrodes not an electrode and reference electrode do you need so so you have to understand that the working electrode is where all the reactions occur so after every reaction the working electrode will be useless so we need 10 working electrodes but this, since there is no reaction happening at the uh, reference and counter electrode even one uh, electrode of each will suffice then the eighth question is basically commonly available pregnancy test kit are which type of biosensors so these since they are made on the nitrocellular membrane they are uh, paper based electrodes again uh, the ninth question commonly available pregnancy test kit is an example of which of the following essays eis or spr uh, lfa or optics so the answer is latter for essays and basically this is the 10th uh, question so a test line for a sandwich lateral for essay based by sensor changes color upon addition of uh, analyte of interest why why is it happening so whether it is because of the uh, target binded primary antibody which is uh, attaching to the secondary antibody that is attached to the test line 
uh, or due to uh, target minded secondary antibody with prim uh, that is attaching to the uh, primary antibody attached to the test line or due to uh, there is no target binding in the last two options so basically due to attachment of primary body antibody with the secondary antibody attached to the test line or due to attachment of secondary antibody with primary antibody attached to the test line so basically we we know that at the test line primary antibody is attached so when the sample moves the uh, sample along with the analytes uh, is dropped on the sample pad in the conjugate pad basically the secondary antibody that is uh, attached with nanoparticles is uh, connected to to the analyte then it moves and at the test line basically uh, it basically test line the uh, primary antibody grabs the analyte and since it al already has a secondary antibody with good nanoparticles there will be color change occurring in the uh, test line so that is how the results happen so the answer is due to attachment of target binded secondary antibody with the primary antibody attached in the test line so do you have any questions <laughs> In case you don't have any questions, you are free to leave the session. In case you have questions, please unmute yourself and uh, tell your question, please.
don't see any questions from your end and I don't uh, see I think everyone has uh, left the thing and I don't see any questions from your end I'll just wait for some time uh, in case in you guys resurface um,
so i am still here if anyone wants to give out your questions i am available
I think there is no I think there are no further questions from your end so I think uh, we will wait for some time I will end this meeting I would again like to thank thank you for your uh, attention and also like to inform you that in case of any comments on while watching this on YouTube you can put this in the my uh, uh, comment section I will uh, try to incorporate your uh, questions in the next uh, video or else I will try to answer them there and then and there I would like to thank you for uh, all for your attention thank you